why does Marcy's death work artistically? Because it does, even though it really shouldn't. Character death can be very effective, but it can also be an easy way to generate pure shock value, especially for a character like Marcy, who is young and sweet and mostly innocent and very much beloved by the fans. If you had asked me before True Colors if Marcy should die, I would have said no. I would have said it wouldn't have been necessary. Having Marcy tearfully reveal her true intentions to Anne would have been devastating enough. And indeed, Marcy's revelation is the most devastating scene in the episode for me, perhaps the most devastating scene in this entire show. Her reasons are idealistic, they're selfish, and they're sympathetic. It can be all three when it's written as well as it is here. The episode is poignant and achingly, hauntingly beautiful, even without Marcy's death. But this does not necessarily mean that Marcy's death is shock value. Indeed, I'm quite impressed that the show managed to do it in such a way that, while it is shocking, it is not shock value. Marcy's friends will forgive her. It will take time, but they are caring, compassionate people even despite their flaws. If Marcy is revived, like I believe she will be eventually, the three of them will have long, heartfelt, honest conversations with each other about what they really want for themselves and how they want to be treated by the others. Their friendship has been broken by the events in Amphibia, and even back on Earth, there were underlying cracks but those cracks can be repaired, the friendship can be put back together. These three really care about each other. Marcy's death, however, cannot be smoothed over with a few kind words, or even a few heartfelt conversations. It is much more permanent than the feelings of betrayal Marcy creates by revealing the truth about her intentions. Her death is an unfeeling, unforgiving fact. Even if the show does revive Marcy, as I believe it will, the impact of her death will still feel permanent. It will still linger. It will still affect how Marcy sees the world and how she sees herself and her relationships with others. This would be especially true if the show does not revive her right away, if it actually waits to bring her back to life, and makes bringing her back to life a very arduous process. Say, if it takes the entire first half of season three. Marcy, especially if her time away from the world of the living is long, will not be able to forget that her actions caused her demise. She will never be able to look upon Amphibia as she did before. She will never be able to see it as this innocent, wonderful, romantic world where everything wonderful happens to her and transforms her life for the better. To a certain extent, it is all those things for her. Her life on Amphibia was, for the most part, significantly better than her life on Earth. But that does not mean Amphibia doesn't have a dark side or that she shouldn't be careful. Marcy, if she comes back, will know that. She won't be able to forget it. Admittedly, Sasha and especially Anne bear a significant part of the blame in this situation. While they both genuinely care about Marcy and want what they believe is best for her, neither of them really give off the impression to me that they respect Marcy as a person. The relation of both of them to Marcy kind of reminds me of... Sasha's relation to Anne pre-reunion. It's a level of familial overprotectiveness that does come from a somewhat good place, but it can still feel very condescending and patronizing. Admittedly, Marcy really does not help her case here. She's very quiet and reserved and timid. She doesn't speak her mind. She doesn't make clear what she actually wants for herself. 
nonetheless, her friends should have tried harder to actually view the world from Marcy's perspective and think about whether she is being made uncomfortable by whatever situation they happen to be in. They should have wondered whether she would maybe prefer to stay in Amphibia, if perhaps her life is better here than it is on Earth. Marcy drops quite a few hints, especially leading up to True Colors, but neither of her friends have even the slightest inclination that, hey, maybe she doesn't want to return home. Maybe it wasn't great for her there. So again, Marcy is not entirely to blame. That the king is an evil monster who manipulated and betrayed Marcy is so obvious that I feel kind of silly just saying it aloud. Anne and Sasha, again, are partly at fault because of their lack of consideration and respect for their friend. Nonetheless, the majority of the burden still is on Marcy's shoulders. She is still the one who decided to trap them in this world. She is the one who made that decision. As crushing as her death is, and it is very crushing, it does feel appropriate in a way, at least in the sense that one can kind of understand why it's her and not Anne or Sasha. It's apropos. Marcy's mind runs wild with escapist fantasies. When King Andreas kills her, after betraying her, he stomps on those fantasies, crushing them the little, tiny, broken, fragmented shards. It's a blunt, harrowing rejection of escapist idealism. Marcy has a tendency to create these rosy views of Amphibia, and this is the ultimate rejoinder to that. Now, of course, this does not mean that she deserves her fate. But it does make her death a lot more than just shock value. It carries a lot of resonance in how it conveys her expectations of Amphibia and her general view of this world just absolutely shattering. Marcy isn't a bad person, I want to state that again. Her rosy view of this world, while not perfect, and while it certainly does not excuse her trapping her friends here, is understandable. She has very much improved in this world. I don't think anyone would deny that. Part of that is because she gets to live out the, the fantasies that she's developed from playing all these games. She gets to be the heroic adventurer. She gets to be important to the royalty of Newtopia. She gets to be the one who protects this city, the intelligent one, the one who's always solving mysteries and figuring out riddles. She's important here. She matters here in a way that she really didn't on Earth. She gets to explore a fantasy world instead of lingering in a mundane, tedious reality that ends up being so repelling to her that she dedicates herself to these fantasies to such an extent that it endangers her health. But these escapist fantasies vanish in Amphibia. And of course they do. She doesn't need them anymore. Marcy isn't just thrilled because she gets to be the hero in her games. That would be an overly simplistic and reductionist interpretation. No, Marcy loves Amphibia because she's not a clumsy, awkward nerd here. She's not this outcast. She's cool, for lack of a better word. She's competent and respected, and she has the opportunity to make those around her see her for who she really wants others to see her as, instead of just this clumsy, awkward nerd who's not good at anything except getting good grades. People take her opinion seriously. They respect her in a way that even Anne and Sasha really don't. They don't condescend to her, and that matters. Marcy is in love with the person she gets to be here. Why would she want to go back? I wouldn't if I were in her position. Why would she want to return to having to be this awkward, clumsy outcast? 
who doesn't really have any control over her life. So, I suppose it's worth asking ourselves why Marcy never voices these opinions to Anne or Sasha. I think a lot of it has to do with her position in that friend group back at home. She very much gives off the impression when she's around Anne and Sasha that her role is the mediator at best and just the follower at worst. Compared to Sasha, or even to Anne, she really doesn't have any power in this friend group. She's just the one who hangs on and sends Sasha cool pictures of frog boxes for Anne to steal. She's probably really afraid that if she did try to present her opinion to Anne and Sasha about staying in Amphibia, she would not receive the response that she really wants. This is why she feels that she needs to be sneaky and go behind her friends' backs. She doesn't want to evoke their ire, and that's understandable. We sympathize with her, we get her struggle, and we don't want her to die, even though we recognize that what she's doing is wrong. We want the world to take pity on her, and it doesn't. It gets her killed, and it gets her killed... Thematically speaking, because of her monomaniac logic to stop herself and, honestly, her friends as well from returning home. Had Marcy lived even after her friends back away from her, leaving her feeling very alone and desperate in true colors, she might not have been affected as deeply. Compare her to Sasha. Sasha really is invested in having other people, especially her friends, think highly of her and think that she's a good friend, a good caring person who's always looking out for them. I'd go so far as to say that if you don't really comprehend the side of Sasha, you don't really understand her as a character, this is why she's so broken up when Anne says that she's not a good friend at the end of season one. For Anne, this is a triumph over someone who's been manipulating her. For Sasha, it's just a shock. She thought she was doing things right. She thought she was really taking care of Anne and being a good friend to her. And the idea that she's not just completely causes her view of herself to crumble. So she spends most of season two just wandering the world and trying to figure out who she actually is and what she actually wants her relationship with Anne to be like. Marcy is a little different. She's both more aware and perhaps a little less considerate. I don't mean that to be cruel, I really like Marcy, but she, unlike Sasha, really is kind of aware that what she's doing is something her friends would not approve of, but even considering that, the idea of returning home to Marcy is so viscerally repugnant that she wants to do everything in her power to stop that from happening. Even with her friends backing away from her, causing her to arrive at this moment of anagnorisis, in which she finally realizes the consequences of what she has done, there's no guarantee that lesson would have stuck considering how deeply she just doesn't want to go back. But because she dies, ignoring the consequences of those actions is impossible. Even if she is revived, she will be a different and wiser and more mature person. This won't be a Jon Snow situation where the difference between him pre-death and post-death is so similar that it doesn't really seem like it has any sort of coherent point. Here, Marcy will be a changed person. The pain she's both suffered and inflicted on others will cut through her revulsion at the idea of returning home. Now, that doesn't mean she will want to return home, but maybe it'll cause her to try and form a third option that is not either going back or trapping her friends in this fantasy world. She will be brought into a heightened understanding of the impact 
her actions have on those around her and also on herself. So thank you all for watching. If you liked what you saw today, I really recommend that you like, comment, and subscribe. Donate to my Patreon if you can and you want to see more videos like this. Keep watching Amphibia. It's a great show. Season 2B is genuinely fantastic, and I'm probably going to rewatch that again and again and again. But I will say this is probably the last... True Colors video I'm going to make for a while. I love this episode, but I feel like I'm starting to talk it to death. There's really only so much I can say. I've been talking about it for like six, seven videos now. <laughs> Although I definitely will keep going back and watching it. It's genuinely great. So I hope you all stay tuned to see what I have in store for y'all next. I guarantee you it's going to be great. Tune in soon. Next videos will be arriving very soon. I can promise you all that. Thank you all again. Adios, comrades.